Welcome to Summoner's Rift.
to Summoner's Rift. seconds until minions spawn.
Hello and welcome to game three of uh, the OCE Uni Rumble. Uh, we have a division two match between between what two teams is it? I'm not 100 percent sure at the moment. I've just uh, I've just joined in on this uh, Vista three series. Uh, would you be able to Would you be able to fill me in a little bit here? Yeah. So, so what's happening at the moment. Uh, we're in game three of uh, a match between Deacon DD two and our uh, Monash's undefeated in norms. So uh, game one was uh, a pretty big stomp for the side of uh, UN, uh, UN, and game two was a stomp for D DD2. So both teams seem to uh, have a really easy time in their wins, but in their losses, they seem to be uh, quite lost. So now we're here in game three. So uh, I'm quite hyped for this match. I'm quite, I'm quite hyped as well. And you know, coming into these initial ban phases is quite interesting as well. Coming in with the Warwick, Darius, and Lulu. Very powerful picks, but as well, very powerful bands to top it off. And over towards the left-hand side, we've got Oriana. And then I think another game that I was casting just before this, the first game, right towards the very end, uh, the Oriana that was played managed to get a pentakill uh, straight off the bat, just the shockwave securing three, and then just finishing off the basic attacks to clean up the, you know, the five-man wipe with that pentakill. But now the Shen and Tristana, and Tristana's been very... She's been very commonly picked in this current um, patch, as well as proven to be very reliable. Not not only as a you know very powerful wave clearing based champion, but as well as a very good team oriented you know champion as well. Just the kit she brings to the mix is just it's just fun to have. Yeah, definitely one of the uh, stronger ADCs right now, um, alongside with Cogmore and Twitch. Uh, Trisana being one of the better champions for uh, taking towers while still having an escape. Uh, which uh, Cogmore and Twitch do not have. So uh, we see Sejuani possibly being picked up by uh, the blue side. Around. Yeah, yeah, just hovering around over top, just, you know, thinking, yeah, is this what I want to do? Yeah, she's locked it in. She's coming in with the Sejuani. And so far, we've got Lux for the mid lane and a Brom as a support. An interesting matchup. Looks like they're going for a bit of a CC combo happening right here. Like, Lux has got a very powerful bursting kit, but... You know, if she doesn't time herself correctly, she can be uh, caught out pretty uh, pretty soon as well. Yeah, both teams have a uh, pretty interesting pick so far. Uh, opting for very heavy CC champions, Varus being picked up for the blue side. Um, a lot of single target CC for, for the blue team. Mauzahar being the first pick for their team, I can understand. That's like a, that's like a safe pick. Being the first pick, they want to go with something safe and something that can handle being countered. Like he can sit on the turret and he can still farm pretty well. You know, you compare that to some other champions. Um, you know, it won't be as easy to be able to farm even if you get countered. Whereas like and... Mauzahar proves it to be pretty, you know, as much not as much of a challenge. Yeah, we just have Cogmore picked up for uh, UN. So uh, opting for the the highest win rate ADC right now, quite strong with um generally quite strong with the Lulu, uh Lulu or Soraka, but uh Brom a very good supporting uh champion in this meta. As well with the uh, extended range that you know Kogmo brings in when he pops in that W, just absolutely just you know brings Brom's passive to life. You know they might be running away, but it's just like you know nah, I've got that extra extended range because of my W. You're going to get stunned, buddy. You're going to know what it's like to be hit by the mustache. Yeah. Uh. So we see Nah band out, uh, taking it away from Larson, who uh seems like uh he's a bit of a Nah main. So uh. Standard targeted uh, targeted ban. Hey, having the target bans is always a good thing. You know, it just takes that champion out of the mix and puts the enemy counterpart, you know, in, in that slight little, you know, troublesome situation. Brings them down to the level of uncertainty. Yeah, so last ban is an Akali. Not sure who that's targeted towards, but that that must be a target ban. Uh, Akali not being a meta pick right now, but being a pick that's quite strong for for players that do do know her kit inside and out. It could be a hit and miss, really. Like, she may not be played very often, but when you see her being banned, it's just like, what are they afraid of at the moment to have her banned? Like, what, what are they afraid that she might bring to the mix if she's picked by, you know, the enemy team? Jarvan yeah. 4, we can all understand, though. Like, Jarvan 4 has just got an absolutely amazing, you know, ability. You can just, you know, gap closing, cataclysm, 
just everything about him just just says I am efficient. I am here to help. And there's no longer a sad meme either. It is actually a helpful meme. Yeah, so we see uh, Jace being picked up for uh, DD2 again. So they they have a bit of poke on their team with uh, Jason Varus. Um, fortunately, uh, Brom Brom is picked for the other team. So not sh too sure what they're trying to do there. No, but I'm more curious about seeing this um, Rennington being played into the mix at the moment. Okay, oh, an I'm Ivan pick. with an Ivan pick. Oh, this is just going to be a very interesting matchup right here. Just look at the teams that we've got happening right now. We've got Redick in the top lane versus Jace. We've got Sejuani versus Ivan. Lux versus Malzahar. Lux has the early game advantage, but the minute Malzahar hits level 6, it's pretty much anybody's game at that point. Yeah. Cobra versus Varus. Varus has the range to start with, but I'm not sure how it's going to work out later on. But the only thing I find a little bit certain, uh, I find completely certain, is the Janna versus Brom. Since so Janna doesn't bring much to the mix, when that shield is, when that unbreakable wall is up, just Janna is almost completely useless. She won't be able to get past, you know, his wall whatsoever. Yeah, um, I'm actually really liking DD2's uh, comp right now. They seem to have drafted quite well rounded, but uh, I'm not too sure about the Ivan for. For uh, UN, I, I think it's a bit of a, it's a very niche pick and it doesn't provide enough tankiness to the team. There is a Braum and Renekton, but their their team comp feels a bit disjointed. It, it looks like they're looking to scale uh, just with the Cogmore. Yeah, protect the carry uh, base strategy as um, it's been commonly known to have, you know, been, you know, been seen around the place, you know, protect the carry because the carry will do all the work. Cogmore is just, you know, he, he's very powerful. Like, he's probably one of the very few ADC champions that you shouldn't really just build armor to counter. Like, his yeah. ability kit goes around, you know, dealing magic damage more than actual physical damage. You know, he does help, he does damage based on how much health they, you know, based on their maximum health. He's also got a, uh, a projectile vomit that he shoots up into the air that comes down up to, like, 650 yards or 800 yards away. And they could they they could be running, and if they're below forty percent health, that projectile vomit is just going to be even more powerful because it just like triples in damage just because of how it works. I I'm just curious as to how this is going to work out. Like I don't see Ivan played much anymore, and it's a little bit unfortunate because he's I like him in the jungle. Like you know he doesn't need to attack a champ uh, a minion. Sorry, uh, a jungle creep. He just lets that circle just slowly wind up, and then yeah. he just takes it out straight away but as well as like he spreads the love he spreads that red buff and the blue buff once he's hit level six he sure does i'm i'm just worried with the amount of cc uh on the side of dd2 um mouser car can flash ult same thing with sedge uh varus can ult from afar and uh there there is brawn protecting him but there's only so much in games like this everything is frantic and uh the team play needs to be top notch when you're playing with the Co uh, cogmore Absolutely, and just with the Mazakar's ulti, just completely bypassing Brom's Unbreakable, just he's not going to be able to do anything against it. Like Brom's sh Brom shield when you're playing against the Mazakar is like playing as Yasuo into Mazakar. That wind wall is going to be completely useless because none of your abilities are skill shots. They are pretty much all on target, and they all are, they are all placed on the map. They don't have a, you know they don't have air time. They are completely just poof out of nowhere so it's just like you know Brahm's not really going to have much of an effective time defending Cogmore if that Mauser gets near him yeah so uh we quite clearly can see uh Cogmore is uh the main win condition for UN but uh but uh, what are DD2's uh win conditions for this game I'm not sure which side is DD2 at the moment the so the, the blue right side. side so that's Sejuani, Mauser, Varus that team okay I'm still trying to adjust my brain into the situation that is still buffering, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to adjust quite well. But it, it looks like it'll be interesting. But, you know, both teams have quite interesting comps. Like top lane is a is a very powerful early game combo between both sides. Like you know, if if Runnington isn't careful, uh, he can be put himself into a very sticky situation. You know, if he starts running after he's gone all in, just Jace has that you know the range. You know, when he goes into 
Um, oh, I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, the range form, I'll call it. Mm. When he goes into range form, he gets the extra range from Rennington as he tries to run away. So if Rennington's not careful when he goes all in and he starts running away, he's just going to pretty much just giving himself up. He's essentially already given up. He just hasn't realized it just yet. Yeah. Um. So we see Sejuani uh, has uh, fleet footwork. The viewers at home can't see that, but uh, we can on our screens. Do we want to do the 20 second sync up? We shall do the 20 second sync up. So uh, I will be on 20 seconds soon. All right. I am stuck on 20 seconds. Count us All right. down. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And we're in. We're ready. Yes, we're ready I to see it. some rumble. Yeah. Oh, and a pause straight up. And this no, is I OC. Had, I had the enthusiasm just then. And then that pause just completely just broke it in half. Just... <laughs> When you try to get the enthusiasm, just shit like this happens. It's just like, why do you have to be the buzzkill? Why do you have to screw it around? Yeah, uh, who who knows why? What's your guess? Uh, well, I'm guess I'm quite used to the the lag lag problem. I'm on fifty ping. I can't play on this. It's too hard. Give me a moment for it to be fixed. Fifty ping. 50 ping, you make me cry. Just 50 ping. Huh? Yeah. A lot of people still play on 80 ping and they are still playing comfortably well. And then yep. you get people who have NBN that can play on 30 ping. But the minute they go to 60 or 70 ping, it's just like, uh oh, uh oh. It's like having 200 ping back on North American servers. Yep. My, my issue is anything above 26, I can't handle. My ping is generally on 22. So after, after you like after it surpasses 30, I can see it. And I'm like, no, nope, I'm out, guys. I can't do this. Uh, All right. Coming back, coming out of that pause. And we see uh, DD2 group up uh, looking to invade. Quite the, interesting, uh, quite the common startup at the moment. We have a five man action happening from DD2, whereas ESM are, are sort of scattered. You've got a 3 2 situation. They should be able to un understand by now that, you know, DD2 are all in the bottom lane at the moment, and now he's going to have to all, I think, we're going to see an invasion happening right here. Yeah, um, in-game oh, 2 so is quite in interesting. Game. Yeah, oh, and yeah, they catch him. Oh, and they miss! Oh, no, you... That was interesting. I would, I would, I loved it. It looked like there was going to be an instant <laughs> kill from Malzahar right there. Just it, walking oh. away. It was so free! It was free! That was a free kill! And they missed... I, I think... Uh, did Renekton start W and stun him? Or... Oh, no. He did have oh, shield okay. up, so... That just... Ah. <laughs> I think they had blue balls right there. They just couldn't follow through with the mix. They couldn't follow through with that combination to secure that first kill. And now Mazaha is able to actually maintain himself to go into that lane. Yeah, he doesn't even burn flash, just walks away from that and laughs at them. I think it was more than a laugh. I think it was more of a taunt in this case. <laughs> yeah. Towards the bottom lane, so starting off of the map, we seem to have a passive gameplay between both teams. Uh, over in the jungles, we seem to have a mirroring matchup right now. Just both completely mirroring each other in the opposite direction. Both starting towards the blue buff. Uh, Sejuani happening to come over to her red. She is able to secure both buffs at the moment. If she gets to those buffs first, if she manages to invade first and gets those buffs before, uh, you know, Ivern comes back, he's gonna lose those buffs. Yeah. I'd probably say that's the only downside is playing as Ivern. Is that you need that circle to come up for that buff. Otherwise, if the, if it comes in, you know, if, if someone comes in beforehand and, you know, takes on that buff before, you know, the circle completely highlights, he's going to lose it. Yeah. Uh, it's just one of the things you got to be aware of when you're playing Ivan. You just need to always uh, know where your buffs are at uh, with their circles. You're going to be ready for any uh, steals. So it's just about good warding and uh, understanding understanding your camps. And the enemy are uh, gank root. So far, it's quite evenly matched between all three lanes. Just, you know, even trades, even mixes. The priority line has been penetrated and the minions are past at the moment. But it looks like Cosmo was trying to keep the, the minions from hitting the turrets. That way they still get, you know, get that gold, get the XP. 
Um, if if Varus isn't careful and he pushes too hard, he might start missing out on some of that CS as well as gold and XP. Because they could just push them backwards and, you know, keep them out of sight of those minions. That could put, you know, Cogmore and Brom in a little bit more comfortable spot. Yeah, so we see a bit of a, a CS lead generating in bot side. Varus with the, uh, oh, five CS ahead, but I just saw the, uh, the relic shield. So they're about even. The relic shield, yes, absolutely. Yeah, forgot to I... count that one. Oh, the guardian has been popped by Brom. Oh, comes in with the unbreakable to defend against that arrow. He's proving to be very tanky in this early matchup right now. Just Jana coming in with that whirlwind to try and give him that bit of the, you know, that early po uh, early poke. Ivern coming in from the back line over towards the center. Yeah, there's no the vision there. Off guard. Yes, there's no vision. Oh, Brom comes in with a flash and exhaust coming onto Varus. Ivern is now watching those bushes around. Oh, Cogmo has been caught out, but gets oh. taken out by the ignite from Jana. Jana is now flashed out, and <laughs> Cogmo may have died, but he managed to kamikaze right on top of that Varus, you know, getting that revenge he needed. That was a 50-50 trade, but uh, the the win in that trade overall goes to DD2. Um, Ivan's gank path was a bit weird there, and it was a bit slow to get to the, the Cogmore. Um, yeah, he's planting that bush right that far back, just yeah. to get the range and the, you know, the passive damage boost. Just It's it not necessary. It doesn't add anything. I think it's a 10 or 20 uh, damage boost when you're actually standing in the brush. That's not necessary. You want to get on your cog ASAP, shield him, and protect your team. Like, they already pushed that far forward. They're not going back. It was just we weird full stop. And it's interesting as well that Janna got away too. I was expecting Janna to, you know, fight, you know, fall down. Oh, giving him two kills, but she just walked away cleanly. She claimed the kill and just walked away without, you know, almost being unscathed. Yeah, the the wave was pushing in as well, so uh, Cogmore lost a fair bit of CS from that. Um, so it's a bit unfortunate, but that's just what happens when uh, your ganks don't really work out. I guess that's why you need to make sure your path, you know, you can unlink a little bit more efficiently, otherwise you can put yourself and your lane in a spot of bother. Well, also speaking about a spot of bother, we see Sejuani and Mausaha making their way to the bottom lane. I believe Brett Brom, oh, J Serve is the top lane taking a trade on from uh, Rannington. Rannington has popped that. Oh, oh flash, and the flash yeah, out. But the there's no follow up. up. No. And the TP comes in. 3v4. And Lux is roaming down right now. Powerful with his engage, but unfortunately gets, you know, unfortunately. It's just there was no follow up right there. This can go bad for DD2. Lux is coming in. Lux is coming in with that. So, oh, comes oh and the stun. Brom pops some breakable to try and defend against any oncoming hits. Oh! The stun has been popped and Rannington claims the kill right just before turret. He has that, you know, he has Malefic Visions on him, but that's not going to do enough. That is quite the clean cleanup. That works so well yeah. towards ESM. Just, they were first caught out. Oh, that just a bit of a, just a correction. It is you and not ESM. Just uh, some of the tags are a bit different. So that, that's why I'm finding it really confusing. I've been looking at Brom and I thought, I just assumed that was the team name. What is the, what is the actual acronym for the team? So UN, which stands for uh, undefeated in norms. So you, okay. So I'll just say UN then. Just, yeah, uh, United Nations. Make it Nations. clearer for myself. <laughs> make it cleaner for myself right yeah. there. Um, uh, just that clean yeah. Yeah. Just... They just overstayed. Um, this, their gank didn't work out that well. Uh, Malzahar flash altered straight away with no follow up. Brom, Brom was ready to block that all. It, uh, all. Uh, we saw Renekton TP in and just uh, jumped on them, and they stayed. They didn't drop back. They, they were confident about the four v four v three. And they were wrong to be confident, as we saw that three for uh, three for zero exchange, I believe. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it to I'm so Brad for that. You know the flash engage. That was quite engaged. It was just unfortunate that you know Sejuani was not around to you know continue with the glacial prison. If she had that glacial, if she was close enough to get that glacial prison, you know, up and running, that would have been a very good combination coming out. But Varus as well has an hit level six, so you know the, the continuous CC snares. 
not exactly online yet for D uh, for DD2. Yeah, it's just not safe to do that against a brawl now uh, with that much uh with that with that wall you can't do anything. Wall shield that wall shield <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> We can call it you can call it late for dinner for all you want. It still does the same thing really. It's just the names explain the exact same thing. But uh, the official name for it is unbreakable. And it is, you can definitely understand why it is called Unbreakable for a reason, because nothing gets through it. Nothing goes past it. He absorbs so much damage. All skill shot based attacks just get absorbed right into that wall. And there is nothing that anyone can do about it. Unless they flash over him, there is no way around it. Oh, coming with oh. a double dash to get that stun on top of Jace. Continuous, continuously bullying him right now. Coming with that aftershock, that's a that's quite an interesting build up. Oh, oh. Also coming with an interesting build up is Sage One coming from the bush to try and catch him out. He's in ulti form. He is in he can he can he win this two v one though. He is winning this two v one trade. He takes down Sage One for the first. Jace has flashed out of the mix and is now being forced backwards. Lux down. Lux is Lux coming down to ult. Oh, here we go. Lux coming in. Oh, he gets it. Elimination is just disintegrated, Jace, right on the foul. She's predicted everything. That was blind. Completely. That was completely blind. Comes in off the foul and just completely rewards herself. That was a very, very powerful strike. That was very powerful. She timed herself well. She knew exactly where he was. Even though she had no wards, she had a very good predictive pathway and she saw it, went for it, and it rewarded her completely. And with that, Rennington now has the free charge on the turret. Jace is now teleporting back to top to try and close the gap and keep him from taking that turret. Ivern is invading the jungle. Bot lane is having a two-man action. It is just action galore. There's going to be another 2v2. We're seeing a 2v2 action oh. happening top lane. Oh, no. He is close to dead. Oh, He's... Daisy has been unleashed. But Rennington, unfortunately, is... He's still in the mix. Oh, my God. Not his second time. Oh, now it gets take, finally gets taken down by Jace. And now Jace is in a 2v1 situation of his own against the Daisy. Lux is coming in to help him out. It's being chased by Mousa from behind. This is just absolutely, this is just juicy. This is a Thanksgiving dinner of League of Legends right here. Just, there is just fights everywhere. If you want action, you want kills, you want deaths, you want to see people go down ruthlessly. This is the match. Look oh, right and they're now. fighting in bot lane right now. <laughs> Oh, coming with the unbreakable and the short. Oh, just. Cogmore does it again, jumping in. Oh, he does not manage. He doesn't finish him off. Mazahar's looking bot though. He's roaming down. He may catch him off. No, he's no. staying in that bush, that tri bush. He's staying in that tri bush. They know there is their control ward there. They know there is also a red ward in that bush. As they have just indicated, there is an enemy ward in that bush from the blue side. They are aware of what is happening. Oh, th th this is just this is just juicy right now. I just, I'm just loving the action. Right yes. Yeah. <gasps> oh, Lux got caught off. Lux. Lux is in his spot of pickle. She oh, good flash. The, re the redemption has been popped. Oh, that is almost a double snare. Oh, first Ooh. turret goes to bottom lane straight away. Just drunken holic and humanity have taken that first turret bonus. I don't even know where that went. So that just that just looked like she just blind shot it there. Just missed everything completely. Ivern comes in on the side, but just doesn't do anything. Now Sejuani is in a real huge pickle. She has less, she has 10% health. Ivern is coming, not doing anything. Lux is still in the mix. She's still pushing. Oh yeah, my god. This is they, just... they may win mid tower. They got to back off. There's guts. no mana. But there is all guts, and I'm pretty sure there's about to be all glory happening on the side of UN right there. Just running to coming in from behind with that demolish, procking down. They have taken that demolish down. This Second does turret. not Jace seem like a healthy now. TP. No, no, that is completely off the foul. That is, an, that is a successful snare onto Malzahar. I must say, well done to Lux for catching him out like that. It's not often you manage to get, you know, you manage to get a successful snare onto Malzahar, seeing as his passive prevents the first you know, ability from hitting him. Or should I say, the first anything that hits him. Yeah, both teams are looking to kind of reset now. They might need a breather after all that action. I might need a breather after all that action. <laughs> yeah, so we start to see a gold lead uh, surmount for UN, 3k ahead. Uh, let's see how it's split apart. So, uh, bot lane uh, Cogmore has 1k ahead of uh, ahead of that Varus. That's, we can see he already has his uh, Blade of the Ruin King. And uh, Varus is still trying to build his... 
Quincer's Rage played, I believe. In the top lane, we see Cogmore coming into yeah. action with Rennington coming in with a stun on to Jace. Oh, just coming in with a projectile vomit, taking down Jace for that easy kill. That's just going to increase his gold lead right there. He's almost 1500 ahead. What, what was Jace doing there? We've got the entire DD2 coming up to the top lane defense line. Are they going to defend it? We don't know. Let's see what happens. As we see a whirlwind coming in to try and push the wave backwards, we've got Reddington hiding in the bush. Brom coming in from the back to become that front line right there. Lux is making an easy push mid lane, almost just Varus, sorry, Malzahar is completely gone from Oh, they're going There's deep. Three man dive. Sidrana coming in to try and defend. She successfully defends. Special Prison unleashed and takes down Kogmore in the mix. Varus also popped his ult at the same time though, so that sort of limits the sort of limits the CC to just one ability essentially. Like you know, Kogmore got frozen, but he also had the snare from Varus's ulti, so it sort of defeats the purpose of Varus's ulti right there, wouldn't you say so, Eric? Yeah, uh, Meanwhile, you see uh, Ivan split pushing the bot lane. Lux is being hit on by uh, Jace, oh, and they are. Getting by touch of the void. Holy crap! That was a bit overkill, but it does the job. The flash, the flash was unnecessary right there. Just, I, I think they would have still been able to get her without that flash. Oh, just the, the easy poke right there. Just she, he saw them coming. He'd give him a little bit of a taste. Yeah, they're being they're a little caught off. Oh, they're coming out. They're really making a power. They're really making a push. I'm so Brad is really showing him how much of a Brad he can really be. Yeah, um, I, I need to criticize Ivan a little bit. As a as a big Ivan player, uh, he's just split pushing bot lane while action's happening in the top and mid side. Uh, you don't you don't need to be there. You don't really offer that much split pushing. Um, oh, he's just being ah, set on his cot. Renekton's uh, ease out is on point. He's done that twice already. Uh, both times on the third stack of uh, Sejuani's E. It's quite interesting. He's still ahead though. He is, he's getting quite fed. He only has one completed item, which is his boots, but it's doing well. Oh, Ivan coming in to steal the red buff over in the south. Jugger right there jumps over the wall. Now there's a 3v action. There's a 3v2 action happening in the mid lane. Lux is pushing, Cockmore is just shooting at that turret, getting a free turret with that range. Oh, he is really making effect of himself. Don't know what that projectile vomit was for just then. May have been for show. Celebration. Way, I don't like looking at it. I don't like the look of it. <laughs> so, uh, first... I feel like I'm drunk just looking at it. I feel like that's me after seven drinks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tier 1 towers are all down for DD2, so that opens up the map a little for uh, UN to, to make some plays. As well as a 4,000 gold lead and 5 kill lead for them at the moment. Cogma may be behind in CS, but he makes up for it with the kill and assists happening right there. Lux is also ahead on all fronts. Also in deaths almost too. She's a 2 one, one and he's a 0 one, one for 104. So she is 132. What do you want to see from DD2 right now to, uh, to pull that lead back? Uh, they need to start pushing lanes. They need to try, they need to start, you know, trying to come together. Not as, not so much as like, you know, a five man team, but just being able to make picks and try and keep lanes pushed. Cause right now they are not going to be doing well. They are keeping like, right now UN are having all three lanes pushed constantly. They, you know, DD2 are constantly pressured. They don't know, they can't really make a push. They there may be a 4v5 here. I think so. The Juan is looking. 5v5, Ivan is making his way downtown. Oh, Sejuani, we get the Fugatial Prison. The Mountain oh. unleashed his ulti, but gets stopped by Rennington. Rennington is stuck in the mix, and it's now... You know, it, it's just... Oh, that was juicy. Just both teams having a clean fight. Both teams, you know, getting away. UN is chasing them. DD2 knows they wouldn't be able to win that team fight if they stayed in the mix. They did well to push back. And now it looks like they're going to continue another dance-off here over the Dragon Pit. Yeah, even though it's only a cloud dragon, it's just going to be interesting how things are going to work out. The double snare taken off. Oh! Oh! Deletes Jace with that single illumination. Oh, jeez. And the first dragon goes to UN right there. Just, oh, that was a clean, that was a clean take. Yeah, I, I just don't think that was a good idea for DD2. Uh, they had three of their ultimates down. Sejuani, uh, Malzahar, and Varus all had their ultimates down. Um... So they, they didn't have much going in. Uh, they should have just conceded, pushed up their lanes and uh, reset appropriately. Now they're 
they're most likely going to lose Harold here, unless Sejuani can steal it away. Aw, oh, that was a nice little wave goodbye from Daisy right there, as she uh, fades off into the nut. Oh man, just a five man, you know, action happening over here at the Herald camp. They really want that Herald. They don't want it contested. But it looks like Sejuani couldn't contest it either. Just the, the amount of defense they pushed around. Lux is really making efficient use of her ulti as well, using it as a wave clearer. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be back up as soon as she uh, walks back into lane. Uh, that's just a beauty. That's just a beauty for ulti right there. Just the cooldown is that small. It's just like, oh, it's cute. I used my ulti. It's gonna be up in about 25 seconds. Yeah, I'm just looking at the right side of uh, the screen, watching her ult, ult tick back. It's it's actually really quick. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, it's, just, it's already almost up. She just used it like probably like not even 20. Not she's even she's not even up to the, uh, the tier one tally yet. And oh, as soon God. as she's there, it's. It's up! It's up now! This, this is what it means to be- <laughs> This is what it means to be Lux right there. Just the amount of cool- just the shortness of the cooldowns. I just, I just can't wait for it to be level 18. It's, it's gonna probably have an even shorter cooldown than like, you know, rock- than just a rocket jump with Tristana at level 1. Ooh. See, this is the action I'm talking about right now. Like, just that la that lane pushing. Just Malza has some lifting visions on the minions, and Varus, you know, helping take down those minions very quickly. It helps keep that lane push, but <laughs> that would need to, like, split themselves into three and do it for every lane, because just look at that. Kogma has reset top lane. If anything, they've actually pushed it backwards now, so that's pressure towards, you know, DD2 as the top lane is now pushing, and they have to focus their attention up there. If they don't focus their attention up there, that's just going to be even worse because they're going to be at that tier 2 tower. Look at his split. Yeah, it's right, though, quite. It looks like every team is passive now. Yeah, it's quite interesting seeing how uh, each team is funneling their gold. Um, on the side of uh, UN, they just seem to be taking whatever they can get. And uh, for DD2, they're, they're trying to give as much as possible for the Varus. Oh, and we see Harold come out. I think we might see a Daisy coming out here if they're going to continue that push. You yeah, know, Harold Daisy. It, that's that's scary. That's uh, generally yeah. a free tower if you push correctly. Oh, headbutts. Turret takes that 30%. Continues the attack. The push has been lasted. An entire wavelength of pushes have been <laughs> unleashed right in front of that turret. That is going to be very interesting right there. That feels like a bit of a wasted Herald. <laughs> Well, they managed to take down some. Oh, coming with a double Ooh. dash. Oh! He's coming in with the elimination. Almost taking down Sage Oh, Cogmore's caught. Yep. Up. Yes, this is the Cogmore. The CC's Cogmore. coming out, but there's so much. Oh, Sage Wani gets out with the skin on Tiff Daisy. He's chasing, but of course he gets taken down. The TP has been unleashed by Rennington. Rennington has joined the prey. Jace has managed to follow up as well, but they have got the complete lead. Jace is making a push to try and push them backwards. They push them back. How did, it's not gonna be for how did they survive? I don't know. There was so much action. My brain is still, oh, they're still going. Oh my god. Jace gets caught out by the snare and then continues. Oh my god. The ult is back up. What is this? Holy crap. I don't know what's going on. But I love this. Oh, Reddington. Right, they come down and take that turret with the demolished completely popped. I read comes in oh. that snare and take They can Baron. Oh. Uh, Maybe? Did they risk it? Baron. No. No, they're not no. risking it for the biscuit. They don't want the biscuit. Yeah, Sejuani's so still up, so uh, resetting is the smarter smarter thing to do right now. I'm just uh, flabbergasted as to how Cogmore's still alive. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Whatever he ate for dinner is really working well for him right now because he's just it's just spicy. It's just oh, I, I think I see. Knight's Vow. I th uh, I'm pretty sure um, Brom popped the Knight's Vow just to... Uh, Take some of that damage for for the Cogmore, and then obviously Ivan redemptioned and chucked down his shields. And oh, there's Lux shield as well. Forgot about that. So oh, yeah, that's the Lux bubble, the double bubble. If it's landed correctly, uh, to add in as well with that Knight's vow, the fact that he's used it on Cogmore and Cogmore does a lot of damage right now. That is a lot of damage that he will absorb from Cogmore, as well as he will also be taking a lot as much, just as much as healing. Oh, uh, well. so Jana like looks like she's being caught out. Jana caught out. The mix comes in with Boom. the combination and gets blighted. She is completely disintegrated. Yes, it would help if you apologize for Jana for deleting her just as easily as she did just then. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, the double bubble. Uh, could you elaborate on that just a little bit more? Uh, when she sends out her, when she sends out that wave to give, you know, whoever it touches. Oh, that. Oh, Cogmore shot. Oh. As Cogmore gets caught out with the glacier, with Varus's ulti, and then continues on with the glacial prison. That is the combo I'm talking about. That is the continuous snare that you need to prop out as a team like that. That is the combo that we were talking about in the lobby. Just a champion yeah. select. Those combos are what needs to be happening. That just extends the duration that he is stuck by at least a second and a half. And, you know, that second and a half will feel like an eternity. You know, when you're trying to get out of the situation, it's like you're thinking on the spot, but you don't have enough time to be able to do anything because you don't have that time to actually do something. You're stuck sitting there doing nothing. You have no control of your champion. It lights out if they get you. And unfortunately for Cockmore, it was lights out. Nice little reset in the mid lane. We see a line of bushes coming out from Ivern and a reset of minions coming in. They've reset the minions backwards to, you know, a complete reset now. Both minions will be meeting towards the mid lane again. That's a five man action happening in the mid, but oh, it looks like we have a surprise the... action happening in the bottom dra by the dragon pit by UN, taking that second dragon for themselves. That's a water dragon to them now. That is movement speed out of combat as well as passive healing. Oh, oh wow. Azhar gets caught out on the mix, but pops oh. in that stopwatch. Flashes away, but unfortunately still gets caught out by Brock's passive and his met is on the timely end. Ivan is continuing to try and trade from the side. Brom tries to make the clear push, but just unfortunately is for naught. Oh, this game is absolutely this is just action galore. They could uh, try and force Baron right now. They could actually. Mazahar is either a Baron bait or uh, looking to take top tower. Oh, In uh, dancing him off. It's just, it's just a yeah. dance off back and forth right now. It's just that whoever is caught out is the one that's going to lose. Oh, oh. Like Renan is caught out, but he is taking on Sejuani. He is dealing damage. He is now tucked by two. He is stunned. But over towards the ward itself, Fox is caught out. Jace and completely combo wombo comboed him, but just didn't get the finish him. Oh, catches oh, Garrus wow. the mix and just comes in and deletes him. Jana tries to make <laughs> tries to make some effort, but flashes out. Unfortunately, right now DD2 are being very reactive to everything and just letting you end being very proactive. They are just making the pushes. They have got everything. DD2 don't even have a turret right now. I am worried about DD2. Just look at that mini map. They have no turrets down whatsoever. They are completely yeah. under the defense. And now it looks like they're going to be going for a Baron. Sichuani might be making a push, but they've got a ward coverage there. But I don't think they're going to be able to do anything just yet. Yeah, and games like this uh, that matter a lot. People just uh, tend to play a little safer than they normally would. Game 3 matches are always like this, uh, both teams are a lot more scared, they know there's a lot more on the line, so uh, most of the time they- I would too if it was yeah. the final match, I would too, there is no leg room for this. If it was game 1, I would be sitting back in my chair, but in game 3, I'm not even sitting on a chair. <laughs> Oh, both teams are not making a push for the Baron, but we have a lot of ward coverage from DD2. I'm loving this ward coverage right now. Just look at that. Yeah, it's ward coverage everywhere. it's a lot of wards, but it's a lot of wards in the same space. So uh, I don't think I'll it's agree. that useful because uh, outside of the two just in their jungle, there's about four wards just in front of Baron. I'm pretty sure you can see Baron with just one ward. Come on, guys. <laughs> I think they want to have complete vision. They want 150%. You know, there's no such thing as 100%. It must be 110%. <laughs> oh, I wish I could check Lux's uh, alt CD right now. Oh, I will actually take a look at that for you. She has it on 33.15. What? Yes. She's not even there level is... 16 yet. That's oh, going to be shorter. I have a feeling she. I have a feeling she has the ultimate hat active with her as well. So that's just going to make the cooldown so much more shorter. That's unreal. This is what it means to be a Lux pro right now. This is what it means. I, I'm loving this so much. I, I love Lux. I love everything about her, and this is just making me want to play her even more. And just that right now, you and are just making plays. They are making a four-one split. Cogmore is repushing that top lane. 
He is keeping the pressure on. Rennington is bottom lane pushing around. Lux is still keeping it in the mid lane. Stuart still keeping it towards that first turret. And just Braum and Ivern are just having that little, you know, Skippy Longstockings moment near the Baron. Oh, head. they can do Baron so quickly. Daisy has been unleashed. They are continuing the push. Is there going to be a contest from DD2? DD2 tried to do something. Oh, Mazaha has popped his. Oh, really Dejuani whiffs her ult. What's happening from Rennington? Lux has her ult once more. Pops it again. Oh, misses out on Varus, but kills. Lux they're they're running to the wrong the side. Business. That is not their jungle. No, that is the enemy jungle. I am curious as to why they thought they would get away there. And they, they just completely just ignored everything and they're going to try and pick their Baron. Sejuani is going to try and... They need to back. If Sejuani they doesn't smite this, yeah. if Sejuani doesn't steal it, then this could be a well, game losing play. For the effort, they have ignored the Baron now. They are trying to take her down. She goes down. Unfortunately, that smite doesn't go off in time and that is a clean Baron as well as a kill. For you and you and are really really ahead. That is almost a ten thousand gold lead. They have five turrets. One Jace may have taken the mid turret, but that came at a huge cost to DD2. That may be a global goal for the team, but that's not enough in comparison to that Baron bomb as well as the five man mention on that. Kill. Yeah. They are making push for that first turret. Oh, Jana goes down in the mix once more. Lux's ult comes down on her as well. Derek's gauge passive has been popped. He is huge. Oh, he Lux picks him. He is getting out. Lux just managed to get away with that Sonya's. Oh, man. This is just... This might be over in a hat trick. Yeah, oh, this so is... Lani comes in with a charge to try and push off Cogmore, but just unfortunately just kisses him. He knows what he can do, and she, he is not bothered by that whatsoever. Yeah, and that's why I said Sejuani needed to back off. Uh, nine times out of ten. You are not going to get that smite. Um, and when you don't, you die. And when you die, you lose everything. But here we see Braum getting picked up, but yeah, Ivan I shields him. Lose everything as well. He is quite tanky at the moment. That Guardian is really working well for him. As well as popping on away. Coming into that slight little pause. We have a, we have a lot of difficulty. It might have been um, someone... You know, DCing or something. I don't really know. Can we get the stat? Can we get the uh, update? On what's yeah, going let's on here? Uh, let's see. Just give me a moment. Ooh. Yeah, nothing's been said from the place, so it must just be a uh, must just be a quick lag. Or it could be a toilet break. I mean, we are thirty minutes into game three. Yeah. I'm pretty sure someone might not be able to hold it in as very long. I'm waiting for my bladder to burst after having almost two liters of water right now. Um. <laughs> so while we're on break, instead of going to our, our, our restroom break, let's talk about a game that is not League of Legends. So uh, <laughs> you're playing Monster Hunter World right now, aren't you? Oh, yes, and it is quite the fun game, I will put it for you that way. This, the, uh, the hunts are as interesting as uh, playing... With a bunch of people who are pretty much blindfolded right now, they just go into uh, they go into a quest and they die just as easily as they went into it. <laughs> What's your preferred weapon right now? At the moment, oh, I would love it to be the jaw blades, but they just don't deliver as much damage. No, they don't jump. do much, do they? They're so cool. I, I look at them and it's like, yeah, I got dual blades, and then all I do it's like <laughs> I just feel like I'm a I'm, I'm a bit of a kitchen knife, and I'm just trying to cut a <laughs> cut a dra dinosaur's tail off. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it doesn't cut off the tail. Any particular weapons actually cut off ta cut off tails and actually knock knock skulls backwards. I've been doing a little bit of research into trying to you know be able to disorientate monsters, and uh, it has been quite the pickle. And just with how some people play at the moment, with their inability to be able to dodge, uh, you know, creatures when they're charging at them. If they die three times, it's just the quest is over. And that 30 minutes you spent on that single quest, just trying to kill one monster, just goes completely for naught. You get no gold, you get no XP, you get nothing. Sounds like League of Legends. Yeah, pretty much. You can play it, a game for Except you don't lose... An hour, you, no. you don't lose LP though. That's, that's the difference. No, you don't lose League of Legends points. Instead, you just lose like, you know, half life. hour of your life. <laughs> 
Oh. In this case, League of Legends, you lose 30 minutes of your life or however long the game went for. You're set back, you know, 16 to 20 points, depending on how much you lost, and you got to play another game just to catch up to where you were. So I'd probably say you've wasted maybe two hours of just trying to get up to, you know, just to maybe an extra 20 LP if yeah. you're lucky. Don't, don't forget the crippling depression that comes with this game. <laughs> <laughs> the crippling depression, absolutely. Just oh, and the stress that comes with it. And the what abundance of like salt. Food? What else are we gonna add? This is this a turkey sandwich now? We can add more to it. Oh god, the turkey sandwich. Oh, it's just League of Legends is an entire category of salt uh, on its own. I love how and we're locked on our Brom. Then the pause screen right now, you can see <laughs> Brom just midair, just uh, chilling right there. <laughs> that is me right before we that is me just right as that is pretty much me right as like you know you come to that critical point in the game when you miss your abilities it's just like that is me moments before i fuck up my moment <laughs> yeah i'm i'm thinking right now braum and uh braum and ivan might have a bit of a competition going between them so they're they're probably looking at uh whoever dies next uh is gonna treat each other to a bit of a lunch both people yeah, on uh, zero deaths, too, so, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be quite interesting. Oh, d see, this is why Ivan is just so good right now. He he's very powerful. And Braum as well is just proving to be very tanky. And he's just having so much fun. See, what, I, look at him. <laughs> what I like to see is that he still has his stopwatch and oh, pause is done. Pause is over and we are back to the game, everybody. As we're coming back from the pause. Let's just resync up. Yep. Let's pause on 30, 45. Uh, okay. All right. 45, yep. All right, let's three. go on one. Three, two, one. All right. So we're back. Resynced up, back in the game, and everything is reset. I am hyped. Let's finish this game off, everybody. Let's get back into the final moments of this game. Maybe the final 10 minutes, if we're lucky. I don't want this to be an hour because I'll probably pass out from too much talking somehow. Um, <laughs> over towards the bar over towards the dragon pit, we seem to have an attention, you know, coming towards U United, or, sorry, UN. <laughs> so United Nations right there, just because of the two, just because of the two <laughs> letters we put them down to. But just, oh, the dragon pit is being focused on by UN. They want it, they are going to take it. That is almost uncontested. They have no vision on it. They will be going in. No. Oh, such one. Sedge. Don't do that. Five men end. Don't do that. No. Oh. Daylight come and she want to go home. She freaking got home, all right? I. Sh the, the thing that makes me saddest about how she executed that is uh, she went in with the E. Oh, and we oh. see Jace being caught up. Home, but unfortunately, just gets. Uh, Gets bent by Reddington, gets taken down, and now has had to flash just to get away from that. That is a burn flash. He, he is going to be out on the rebound right there. Lux coming in with the with the poke. This is what makes Lux effective against Malzahar. Her ability to take out his passive just with that ability on its own. He still has that illumination deep up on him. So if she passes, if she passive attacks him, that's pretty much an entire ability as well on top of. That's a third, that is a third, the, tar the lane has been broken, sorry, the base has been broken from the bottom lane, they're going to take that inhibitor, that is two turrets and an inhibitor for UN right there, that is two inhibitors down. DD2 are looking very, very scarce right now, they are going, they are in a very tough pickle. And it's only just going to look even more oh. grim as they come in with the Sejuani being caught out by Renekton, Renekton popped his ulti. It's now taken down Sejuani. Jana tries to save him with, tries to save Sejuani with the heal, but unfortunately makes them timely end. Barris tries to pop his ulti, but just goes nowhere. And now comes in with a redemption with the four-man healer, replenishing both Rankton and... Where's Ivan. Daisy? Oh. oh, Daisy has come out, and Barris goes down in the mix. Jace gets taken down. Cogmore taking Jace, as well as the turret. That is another turret, and this is game. As well as the entire series for United Net. Sorry, for UN. <laughs> oh my god, I am out of it right now. Oh, Frenington. Another oh, Lux Soul! This is, this is a story of Lux Soul. Oh, the League of Lux. League of Lux right there. Just absolutely amazing. Just th those games. Just that game. Uh, yeah. If that, if that wasn't the series, 
I might need another vocal cord. Yeah, this was uh, pretty Scroll much how the it. first two games went. Oh, jeez. I, I, I feel sorry for the for the previous casters that actually There had were no games. casters. It was just a silent game. Well, I can understand why all that happened then. Just, wow, just those games were absolutely amazing. Just, oh, I, I just couldn't believe it. Lux just everywhere. Just Lux is Oprah Winry of, the, of League of Legends. You get an ult. You get an ult. Everyone gets an ult. You're all going to burn alive. Yeah, so uh, that's a 2-1 victory for Undefeated in Norms. Ah, uh, crazy, crazy series. Absolutely. It was just amazing. This this is what I love about casting. Just the plays, the games, the absolute open ring recession we saw from Lux right there. Just you were surprised. You'll be surprised from nearly every single corner. And with that, the series is done. Undefeated in Norms, well done for the you know, well done for the series. You've brought a lot of action to this day. Both teams done really well. A special thank special thank you to uh, DD2 for putting up a really powerful fight, doing really well. You know, you took one game, then they took a game, and then you know the third game, UN just unfortunately had that final pit. You know, had they had the final push, they had the final take. Lux being Oprah Winry, just taking it. You know, just taking it downtown, just completely annihilating everybody. Just it was a it was a complete slaughter fest of the match. There was so much action, you could call it Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Yeah. But with that as well, us here at the Castle's desk, we are pretty much done for tonight. We yeah. thank you so much for coming out. We thank you for watching and supporting the stream. Uh, a special thank you to uh, Eric here for actually hosting the entire stream and joining me for this third game, uh, you know, as my fellow caster. Um, I'm also happy to be here as well. But yeah, just to summarize all of that, everybody, have a good night. Thank you. Airy out. Lux out? Yep, Lux out it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night. Bye.